Charity Fellowship this morning. Grace and peace be unto you. We ask each member to share and friends a watch party of our live stream service. Mark chapter 11 and verse 22 says, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Amen. We bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Our scripture this morning will be found in Romans chapter 11, beginning with verse 33. Romans 11 and 33. All the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him, and it shall be repaid to him? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Let's bow in this time of prayer. Father, we thank you today for being so loving, so gracious, and so kind. We magnify you for being our God, our Father, our Creator, the sustainer of the universe, the one who controls the sun, the moon, and the stars, the winds and the waves. We bow in your presence, thanking you for life, health, and strength, thanking you for another day. This is the day you've made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for supplying our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you for being a friend that sticks closer than a brother. We thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. We bow today as we come once again to worship and to study your word, to set your scripture. We ask you in that name that's above every name, Jesus Christ, that you would cleanse our hearts and our minds, forgive us of our sins, our iniquities, and our transgressions. We ask you, Father, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Father, we pray now that your word would fall on good ground in our lives and bring forth fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. Father, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and we come into your courts with praise and we're thankful unto you and bless your name. Oh God, we pray that you lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, we pray this morning that the mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. We ask you, Father, that we walk by faith and not by sight. We pray now that your will be done and that you're glorified in everything that we do and say. We pray for those near and far that are listening. Those that our bodies might be racking with pain. Father, we ask you as only you can. Because you're omnipresent. You're everywhere at the same time. Touch right now as only you can. The centurion said, Lord, you don't have to come but speak the word. And we pray that your word, Lord, your healing virtue would flow through everyone. 
here today. We thank you and we magnify you. In the name that's above every name, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. We thank you. Amen.
Us want more of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. more of His presence, you, more of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Hallelujah. Let's welcome Him. Let's welcome Him. Amen. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes, yes. But then He says, If any man opens the door, so even though He's knocking, we have to open the door. Let him in and he'll come and sup with us. Jesus, you're welcome. Jesus, you're welcome. 
I bless you today and we praise God for your presence once again at this time of studying in the Word. Last week we began talking about the lame man healed. And uh, we stopped at verse 5. Today we want to begin at verse 6 through verse 10. Notice these words. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And uh, immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up, stood and walked, leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Amen. The grass withereth and the flowers fade away. The word of our God stands forever. And I want to talk about today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, there are, there are, there are names throughout the ages, throughout history that have done uh, extraordinary things. History has recorded some of the great things that men have said and men have done. We can have the utmost confidence today in the power of Jesus' name. A name in our society, a name is a label that identifies a person. In Hebrew culture, the name indicated far more. The name expressed the essence of the person's being. Thus, to preach or heal in the name of Jesus was to release the power of Jesus in that situation. Oh, my brothers and sisters, people pronounce names in hope that the power of the being would be activated. So, 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 what a difference in the use of Jesus' name by Peter. Heal the cripple, even as Jesus is present in power with his people today. Notice if you would, it was not magic that healed the cripple. It was the power of God. And Peter used Jesus' name, I'm sorry, Peter's use of Jesus' name was an expression of faith that Christ's essential power could meet the cripple's need. Can I say that again? See, see, see. It was the power of God. And Peter's use of Jesus' name was an expression of faith that Christ's essential power could meet the crippled man's need. Oh, today, we are to pray. We are to seek and live in the utter confidence that the one 
whose name we rely. Jesus is present with us today. Jesus' power still flows and meets every challenge in uh, his name. So brothers and sisters, let's look here at verses 6 through verses 8. Jesus' power. Jesus is alive. His presence and power are still active upon the earth. This is the most important thing God wants people to know. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His son, Jesus Christ, is alive. He is not dead. Having passed from the scene of world history, he's not dead. He is alive and exalted to the right hand of the Father. His presence and power are still active upon the earth and will continue to be active in the lives of his true followers until he returns. His power is still available to me. Can I say it again? His power is still available to me. He still loves and is still greatly concerned for the world and every person in the world, every individual. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. The Bible says uh, in Luke 19, he says that that, 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 that God, that God through Jesus, brothers and sisters, he, he wants to save us. Oh, he cares for the world. But there are some significant facts that must be understood. In verse 6, notice what, notice what here. Jesus' presence and power are not found in silver and gold. Peter says, silver and gold have we none. No silver, no gold. Peter is saying here, we have no money or material good. Peter is saying here, we have no clothes or food. Peter is saying here that we have no house or shelter. Peter is saying here that uh, no society or community service. Therefore, Peter could not give those things to the man. It was such things that the man wanted and expected. He was set there on a regular basis. His family allowed people to carry him to the beautiful gate. Yeah, brothers and sisters, his family knew that a large uh, 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 crowd often went through that gate. They knew that he would be able to receive offerings in order for him to sustain his uh, worldly, earthly need. But, 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 but God had something more important than Though Peter could not give those things to the man, it was such things that the man wanted and expected. See, a lot of times what we want and expect is not what God wants to give us. All right. Amen. Sometimes we're so, we're so caught up in fleshly manifestations. We're so caught up. We're consumed by what we think we need to appease ourselves. And it was what the man seemed to need in the eyes of the world. 1 Samuel 16 and 7 says, Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Hmm. 
It was not what the man needed. It was not the basic need of the man. The man needed to be changed both inward and outward. Yes. Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but but what I do have, yes. Yes. I give you. Well, what, 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 what I'm able to bless you with. Sometimes we're trying to, to meet people's needs with the wrong things. Uh, if, if he was changed physically and spiritually, he would be able to walk and be motivated to work. When God looked at the man, he saw the man's spiritual need and his physical need. Therefore, God's concern was to cure and change the man completely. See, sometimes we don't get a complete change with God. We're, we're more looking for a physical change than we are a spiritual change. Or we're more looking for a physical overhaul instead of a complete spiritual overhaul. God was out to take care of the whole man. My brothers and sisters, God is out to take care of our whole being. Amen. And the answer to changing the whole man was not found in silver and in gold. See, 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 we've got to remember, brothers and sisters, that in order for God to do some things, it's not caught in our natural understanding. All right. So, brothers and sisters, the necessity of life are... Just that thing that are necessity to life. Man's spiritual worth, welfare is his basic need. If his spirit is right, he is right with God and with man. If his spirit is wrong, he is at odds with God and man. If his motivation is strong, he is strong. If his motivation is weak, he is weak. Oh, what God is after is to change man by making him complete and whole. So that man can be Productive, yes. fulfill his purpose in the world and make the contributions he is supposed to make in society. Listen to what he said. He said, he said, he said, I do not have, he was saying silver and gold, but what I do have, I give you. I'm able, I'm able, I'm able to give you what I do have. I'm, I'm, I'm able, I'm able to share with you. I know what you want. I know what you're asking. I know what you've been set here for day after day. Uh, 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 and every Sabbath you're set here. Every Sunday, every time we come uh, uh, on a Saturday Sabbath, you're right here. Every time we show up for prayer, you're right here. Every time we pass you, you're right here. But that's not what you really need. God is concerned with whatever it is spiritually or physically. I'm not saying God's not concerned with your physical. He's concerned with your physical well-being. But he's also concerned with your spiritual being. That keeps a person from knowing his personality and from fulfilling his purpose on earth. That's what keeps us is when we see that God is concerned about us. Jesus' presence and power are found in Jesus' name. Look if you would, he said, 
Jesus' presence and power are still at work because Peter states in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Peter knows Jesus died. Peter knows Jesus was buried. Peter knows that Jesus rose. Peter knows that Jesus ascended. Peter knows that on Pentecost that the Holy Ghost came. So Peter knows that the power still works. Oh, working miracles and meeting the needs of people. Peter preached down to take the man by the right hand. He, he preached down at the man because the man was sinning. See, sometimes we've got to preach where people are before we can reach and bring them up. Notice it now. He takes the man by the right hand. He says, he says, he says, he says, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And see, sometimes when we say in Jesus' name, people look at us like, I can't do it. People stand there and pause. And in the mind, they think it's impossible. But brothers and sisters, when you know God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think, then you're able, my brothers and sisters, to say, rise and walk. And then verse 7 says, and he took him. Do you see that? See, sometimes we've got to reach for where people are. We've got to be, we've got to be committed enough. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 to where we've got faith that God is able to do it. Listen to this. Peter reached down to take the man by the right hand and lifted him up. Two things here, brothers and sisters. The man let him. The man didn't say, get on out of here, Peter. This is what I do. I was born this way. Peter, you need to move on. You and John, go on and pray like you've been praying. I'm here in order to, to, to collect for my livelihood. The man led him. What trust they had in Peter and John. The man, the man, the words that he said put a trust down in his soul. The words that Peter said made the man have an assurance that he could look at Peter. Hey, brothers and sisters, we need to speak the words that people can trust in. We need to speak the words people can have faith in. Our words need to be words of life. Our words need to be words of truth. Our words need to be words of love. Our words need to be words of joy. Our words need to be words of peace. Oh, can man trust us? When we speak to them, not only the man led him because he trusted, but uh, the power, Jesus healed him. What power? How much we need to trust Jesus, his presence and his power. It just, just appears to me, just observation, that, that, that we're good at calling out to God when there's a catastrophe when there's havoc in Bethlehem, when there's a pandemic, but when it appears that it's not affecting us, we go on like there's nothing happening. How much we need to quit questioning and arguing over whether or not we still have the right to call upon Jesus' name or whether or not we still trust his presence and power. We argue over the wrong things. Mm. That's right. Whatever you thought right there, yes, yes. we argue over the... I don't have to call roll. If I call roll, I'll make you mad. You know we argue as Christians over the wrong thing. Amen. But if we would only trust Jesus' presence and power and quit making it personal, it is time to trust Jesus, brothers and sisters, to believe in him, believe in his love, 
He loved us so much he died for us. Believe in his care. Care for the suffering. Jesus cares. Cares for the lost soul of the world. Jesus came to seek and to save that which is, was lost. It is time, brothers and sisters, to go further in uh, the full presence and power of the Lord who is alive. It is time, brothers and sisters, for those of us to stand in his presence, stand in his power. Yeah, yeah, whose presence and power are still available for the earth. The Bible said in Matthew 17 and 20, Verily, verily, I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, Ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove then hence to yonder place, And it shall remove, And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Oh, if we only had faith, as a grain of mustard seed. We want to see it. If we can't see it, then we won't trust God like we should. John 14 and 13 said, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 16 and 24 says, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask. And ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Brothers and sisters, Peter didn't get caught up on the fact that he had denied the Lord. Peter didn't get caught up in the fact that the Lord had asked him three times, uh, yeah, do you love me? Peter didn't get caught up in the fact that the Lord rebuked him when he was concerned about John. Peter trusted the name of Jesus. And brothers and sisters, when we trust the name of Jesus, the man was completely changed. His whole being, attitude, and life. When we trust God, our whole being, attitude, and life will be changed. He was no more shy and reserved. See, see he was no more embarrassed. He was no more ashamed about not fitting in and being accepted. He was saved. This man here that Peter looked at, said, rise and walk, took him by the right hand, lifted him up. See, some people need to be lifted in spirit. Yeah, they might, they might appear down. They might feel down. But is there anybody out there that in the name of Jesus Christ will help lift some people in spirit, will help lift some people that are brokenhearted, that will help lift some young people that have lost their way, that will help lift someone. Oh, he said, if I be lifted up. Sometimes all we got to do is just lift up the name of Jesus. If things are bleak and dismal, if things are in array, then our job in the midst of chaos, in the midst of catastrophe, is lift up the name of Jesus. When we lift up Jesus, brothers and sisters, people are saved. When we lift up Jesus, People are healed. When we lift up Jesus, oh, people are changed. Yeah, on the inside and the outside. See, we've got to stop just inviting people to church and invite them to Jesus. The reason why we have so much chaos in the church is because we're inviting the people to church. We want to get church on. Instead of coming to Jesus just as yes. they are. Yes. If we would yes. get them to Jesus, Jesus could deliver them. And then yes. there wouldn't be so much chaos in the church. The whole personality can be healed. Yeah. Personalities were changed. Yeah. He wanted all. Yeah. And to know it. He was willing to listen to y'all. See, 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 when we let, see, when this man looked at him 
and, and the man let him grab him. This man was desiring to be changed. Why? Because of the way Peter said, in the name of Jesus. See, when Peter said, I, I do not have, that can cause anxiety. But when Peter said, in the name of Jesus, that causes assurance. Oh, brother and sister, this man, he was willing to stand because Jesus said, in the name of Jesus Christ. This man was willing to walk because Jesus said, in the name of Jesus Christ. This man, because of the way Jesus said, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, was, with, was leaping. You don't have to ask nobody to raise their hand. If they've, if they've had an encounter with Jesus, they'll raise it on their own. That's why we have to beg people because they just come into church. They haven't spent any time with Jesus. Oh, when they hear the name Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, and the conviction is in their soul, because you have a conviction. You yeah. just not, see, we've got to just stop saying it like sounding brass and tickling cymbals. We've got to say it like we know he's with us, and we know he can. And we know he wants to. Oh, this man started praising God because he had been touched by the power of God. Notice it now. Uh, he says, so he, the man, the lame man, leaping, uh, stood and walked. Can you imagine? Mm. How this man fell. He'd been crippled all his life. But now he's walking. Look at this ninth and tenth verse. He says, he says, because of this man. See, we're more caught up in wanting to impress people. Instead of letting God use us to reach people. Peter and John were going to pray. But what they didn't know was on their way to prayer meeting, God had an evangelistic thrust that he wanted to do through them. See, sometimes we're just on our way to church. We're not coming to pray. We're just on our way to church. We're not coming to worship. We're just on our way to church. We're not coming to give God the glory. To magnify him because of what he's done all week. How he kept us when we couldn't keep ourselves. Uh, notice it now. When this man receives the name of Jesus Christ. When this man is lifted and trusts God. When this man is Penetrated by the power of God. This man cannot hold his peace. I got to put a footnote right here. See, a lot of times we don't like to see people shout anymore. Get happy. This man was lame. He had something to shout about. This man had been, he didn't even know what it was for his feet to have strength. His ankles to have strength, for his calves to have strength, for his thighs to have strength. He didn't know what it was for his knees to lock back in place. He didn't know what it was for his hip to be to where we would move from one side to the other. This man had always been on his bottom. This man had always scooted around. This man had always had to look up because he was always down. But now, the power of God has touched him. And because the power of God touched him, God's going to, through him, touch others. Yeah. See, brothers and sisters, Jesus is just not about touching you. 
He's about using you. When he delivers you, he has a purpose. When he heals you, he has a purpose. When he changes you, he has a purpose. What is the purpose? I'm glad you asked. He wants to use you to reach someone else. Someone else is lame. Someone else is bound by sin. Someone else is caught by the traps of Satan. Someone else have been like that all their lives. And Jesus want to use you. Yeah. The people. Verse 9, it says, the people. Yeah, you don't have to worry about moving people. All you have to do is let God touch you. The people. You don't have to find a way to conjure up something. If God has touched you, then... It's going to affect the people. Know what the scripture says? The people knew. The man had been truly healed. How did they know? know? And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he who sat begging on at the beautiful gate. Check this out, y'all. Do you see it? They had seen the man for years, sitting as a cripple and begging for help. All they could do was give him some change. They could be no question about the miracle. Year after year, uh, some history says the man was in his 40s. So therefore, can you imagine when he was old enough? I'm going to give him probably between the ages of 10 to where he was brought there. So for 30 years, they had seen him. They knew he couldn't walk. They knew he was crippled. They knew he wasn't faithful. They knew this man's family uh, brought him there. On a regular basis. But this man had been changed. They were, they were, they were filled with wonder. Yes. See, when God does a miracle in your life, then you're going to put wonder and amazement in the lives of others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 were filled with wonder and amazement at the change. See, that's the problem sometimes. There had not been a change. Of in our life. Oh, a change. A make people look at God different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and they, they, they saw, they knew that that, 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 that that which had happened unto him, this man, they were attracted. See, when God does something in your life, people are attracted. It's like a magnet. It draws people. They were attracted. They were wondering and wanted to see what had caused such a miracle. Mm. A changed person. A person who is truly, truly changed by Christ will cause people to stand in amazement and to wonder. A changed person will stir people to desire the same miracle in their own lives or in the lives of some loved ones. See, the reason why people can leave our presence and be negative is because a change hasn't happened in our lives. The Hawkins family had a song that flew through the nation in the 80s. Oh, a change has come over me. Yeah. He changed my life. Yeah. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. When you've been changed, you don't have a problem letting your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When you've been changed, you'll be like those in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia 
and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad. So that we need not to speak anything. See, see, when you've been changed, everywhere you go, people will see a change. I'm not saying things won't happen around you. But because you've been changed on the inside, because you've been delivered from within, because God plucked it up from the root, there's something about you that will have people in amazement and uh, will have them in wonder. Oh, First Peter chapter 3, and verse 15, he said, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asked you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and with fear. See, some things we can stop right there at the door if we know we have hope in Jesus. So when people come and they're lame in their conversation, they're lame in their attitude, they're lame in their spirit, they're lame in their joy, they're lame in their love, they're lame in their peace, they're lame in their faith. See, we all should have a change on the inside. To where we've got a word yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. yeah, we say trust in the Lord. But when we say it, are they changed? We say look to the hills from which cometh our help. But when we say it, are they affected by it? We say Emmanuel, God with us. But when we say it, do they know that God is with us? We say he's a very present help in a time of need. When we say it, can they reach up and expect God to meet their need? The name, Jesus Christ. To call upon the name, I got to tell you again, of someone means to call upon uh, the authority. Peter was saying, in the authority of Jesus. To call upon that name, Peter was saying, in the power of Jesus Christ. To call upon that name, Peter was saying, in the office of Jesus Christ. To call upon that name, Peter was saying, in the nature of Jesus Christ. To call upon that name, Peter was saying, in the character of the person of Jesus Christ. That person's name stands for all that that person is. Can you see Peter saying, I know someone that can change your lifestyle. I know someone who can touch you and his virtue can flow through him. I know someone who can lift you up where you never have to beg again. I know someone yes, yes. who can send his power through your body and no one has to carry you anymore. I know someone that can touch you in such a way that your mother and your father are going to shout for joy. I know someone that can do something in you that no man can do. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, a king may send a decree throughout his kingdom. The decree goes out in his name under his authority. A government, a business official may send a memo throughout his department. The memo goes out under his name, under his authority. When Peter said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, he was proclaiming it is the name Jesus. It is the power, Jesus. It is the authority, Jesus. It is the person of Jesus Christ who will heal you. Jesus Christ can deliver you. Jesus Christ can supply all your needs in according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is life. 
Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is power. Jesus Christ is authority. Jesus Christ, his name is above every name. At the name of Jesus, yeah, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. His person is still active upon the earth. I gotta let you go, brothers and sisters. It, it is the name of the power of Jesus that meets the needs of every individual. It is not Peter, nor John, nor is it silver or gold. Silver and gold can never bring help, not permanently. They can pay doctors to do all they can, but when your money run out, ask the woman who had an issue of blood that they will turn their back on you. Oh, help and disease or accident uh, evidently uh, catches us all. And when it does, no amount of money is of any help. It is Christ alone, his presence, his power that can meet our need. Oh, my friend, Peter knew that the power of Jesus dwelt within Christ himself and only in Christ. As a song we used to say in the hymnal, only what you do for Christ will last. He also knew that he possessed the presence and power of Christ within his body. Can I help you? See, if you say that you ask the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the paraclete to come and, and reside in you, you have the presence and the power of Jesus Christ in you. Quit acting like you a wimp. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can call on the name of Jesus yourself. Now, you can't be like the seven sons of Seba and just hang around the church and think you can call Jesus' name. No, you've got to be a child of the king. You have to have surrendered your life to Jesus. The reason why there's no power in some believer's life is because we have not totally surrendered to Christ. Yes. Oh, my brothers and sisters, Peter knew that he possessed the presence and power of Christ and that he could call. Yeah. See, when you know you got Jesus you can call, yeah, on his name. When Peter knew that he could call, that he was a call representative of Christ upon earth. When you know you are a representative of Christ upon earth and you're not wishy-washy. You want to shout today, but tomorrow you want to act any kind of way. Peter said, such as I have. Because he knew he was a representative. He knew that the Holy Ghost from Acts 1 and 8 was in him. He knew that the power of God had changed. Such as I have. Hallelujah. Yeah, I give thee. I don't have yes, what yes. you might think you want. But I've got something. Yes. Yeah, that you need. He said yes. he, he had the presence and the power of Christ. It was that which he could give. That's what we can give, brothers and sisters. We can give Jesus to our family members. We can give Jesus to our co-workers. We can give Jesus to our neighbors. We can give Jesus to our children. If we want to really leave a legacy, we can give Jesus to our world. Yeah, 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 yeah. He knew he had the power and uh, the presence of Christ. Uh, he was with Christ. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was that which he could give. In fact, that was his very purpose for being on earth. And that's our purpose for being on earth. To represent Christ. And to share Christ's power with those who are sick. Yeah, and those who are hurting. The scripture says, uh, yeah, when I was sick, you visited me. Uh, when I was hungry, you fed me. Uh, 
when I was in prison, you came. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's our job. That's our purpose. Yeah. There are sick people out there. Yeah. They're sick in their soul. Yeah. There's a those out there that are hurting. They're, they're hurting in their souls. Uh, Peter acted first, not the man. See, sometimes the reason why we can't act first is because our attitudes haven't been changed. Uh, we've got to ask the Holy Spirit uh, to change uh, our attitude. When, when our attitude is changed, when people see us, they see us and they have expectations uh, of what God can and will do. Peter was the Lord's representative. Peter was God's ambassador. Peter was Christ's ambassador. Peter was the Holy Spirit's vessel. Jesus had no way to reach the man uh, because he was at the right hand of the Father. But he had uh, Peter. Yeah, yeah. He had already ascended to heaven, but he had descended in the Holy Spirit. Uh, so he had uh, Peter. Jesus had no body but Peter's body. He had no hand but Peter's Hands. He had no feet but Peter's feet. He had no voice upon earth except the voice of you and I. He wants to use your body. He wants to use your hands. He wants to use your feet. He wants to use your voice. He wants you to lift up his name. If any of us act or work was to be done for God then we have to let God use us only what we do for Christ only what they did would get done it's not going to get done sitting around talking about it. the man the man the man was lame. The same is true of us. We're lame in a lot of areas. But when we let the Holy Spirit speak to us and say, rise and walk. Oh, what a blessing would happen. This crippled man appreciated it because he's jumping. He was healed He's praised. If God has touched you, don't worry about what somebody else has to say. Go on and tell him thank you. Yeah. Don't look around and see if it's okay to praise God, if it's okay to worship, if it's okay to give him thanks. See, you can give him thanks and go on. You don't have to cause a spectacle. See, that's what's happened. We want to cause a spectacle to somebody see. No, just give him thanks and go on and watch what God will do. How appreciate people would be when they see that God has touched us and we're excited about what our Lord has done. God bless you today. And we thank God for each and every one. In Jesus' name, we can be healed. If you do not know Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior. Romans tells us in that 10th chapter. That if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then he says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you accept Jesus as your personal Savior, you received him as your Lord, yes. then we ask you today to text us saved to 346-370-1157. That's 346-370-1157. If you need prayer, 
or would like to become a member of Charity Fellowship, go to charityfellowship at yahoo.com. That's charityfellowship at yahoo.com. And let us know. We believe in the power of prayer. Amen. Peter and John went to prayer. We believe God answers prayer. But sisters, we want you to continue to pray for those who are sick with COVID-19. We want you to pray for the doctors. Pray for the scientists. Amen. Pray for those who are trying to find a vaccine. Father, I've asked all of you to pray to the Father. His will be done. Pray for our country in this time of election. Pray that God's will be done. Let's do more praying than we do talking. Pray for this world. We ask you to pray. Pray for our children that are going back into the public school in the midst of this pandemic. And then pray for the parents who are trying to help their children learn and study. Please keep them in prayer. Please keep them in prayer. Pray for superintendents, school boards, people that are trying to make the right decision. Oh, we pray. The Bible said that if any of us like wisdom, let us ask of God. We pray that God would give them wisdom during this time. Thank you for your prayer. If you like, you can financially support Charity Fellowship by giving. You can go on our Charity Fellowship Live TV and give in the Give button. You can go to Cash App, the dollar sign, Charity FC11. That's the dollar sign, Charity FC11 at the Cash App. We ask you to financially support charity by giving. Or you can go to www.cfc11.org. In the top left, left-hand corner, there's three bars. Click on the menu button and go down to the giving and give. Be a blessing. We want you to know we depend upon your continuous generosity your continuous blessings, your continuous giving. Thank you that God has laid on your heart to be a blessing to this ministry. And we just want to thank you in advance for your faithful support of the kingdom work, of lifting up the name of Jesus, of telling everyone that in Jesus' name, rise up and walk. You can watch us again on YouTube at 3 p.m. Or our evening service on Facebook at 6 p.m. Thank you today for being a blessing of just watching us, being a blessing financially, supporting us. Amen. Please go to your YouTube channel, Charity Fellowship Church. Amen. And subscribe, like, share us with your family and friends. God bless you now. Thank God for each and every one. Those of you that are watching us, Facebook, Charity Live, and other areas, on Wednesday nights, I'm sorry, Tuesday nights, on Tuesday night, I've gotten used to that, on Tuesday night, Tuesday night, at 7 p.m. is our time of prayer. 7 p.m. is our Bible study. We pray that God bless you this week. And remember, wherever you go, if you are a child of God, in Jesus' name, you have authority. You're his ambassador. God's purpose in your life is to use you, someone's lane. And God wants to use you to reach down and pick them up. Now we pray the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord 
look upon you with favor and the Lord give you peace. Shalom.